Hello, and welcome back to McKill TV. If you're subscribed and have been following this channel, you know that in our last video we took a look back at the original Suffering game that released back in 2004. So it goes without saying that today we are here to look back at its sequel as we take a look back on The Suffering Ties That Bind. The Suffering Ties That Bind is the sequel to the original game, and the game was released in September and October of 2005, just one year after the original, for the Sony PlayStation 2, original Microsoft Xbox, and of course PC. And once again, the game was developed by Surreal Software and published by Midway Games. The Suffering Ties That Bind is the continuation of the story of Torque, a death row inmate who is believed to be guilty of murdering his wife and children, as we learned in the previous game. This game takes off where the previous game ends, as Torque survived the horrors of Carnate Island, as he escapes and heads back to his hometown of Baltimore. But the madness continues, as Torque quickly discovers that the creatures from Carnate Island are now overtaking his hometown of Baltimore. You will follow it. So Torque must, again, battle the creatures from Carnate Island, as they are now taking over the streets of Baltimore. Throughout the game, more of Torque's backstory comes to light, as he must deal with his past and his old nemesis, a mysterious criminal kingpin named Blackmore, who is connected to Torque's past as well as the death of Torque's family. If the player has saved data from the original game, the game will give the option of having three different openings to the game that coincide with the ending you may have had from the previous game, as the previous game had three different possible endings. So it's really cool that the developers added this in. Once again, gameplay here is pretty much identical to the previous game, as you can play the game in either third or first person perspectives. However, I do feel that the first person's perspective here is slightly improved from the original game, but I still prefer the third person perspective overall again here in the sequel, as I feel that it is the best way to experience the game. But either way, both perspectives feature the same gameplay as nothing really changes, but the perspectives. Once again, this is an action horror game, so Torque still features all the same mechanics that he previously had. Torque can run, jump, crouch, roll, and interact with the surrounding environment, as well as the ability to transform into his inner demon, just like the first game, but with some improvement. The game does feature pretty much every item that the previous game had as far as weapons and other useful items are concerned, but the sequel does add more firearms melee weaponry than before, with flash grenades, baseball bats, steel pipes, grenade launchers, and RPGs being added as well, just to name a few. What's wrong with you? Two major gameplay changes here from the previous game are centered around item pickups. For instance, Cork can no longer stockpile painkillers and use them as he wishes, but now he must rely on stationary painkiller pickups throughout the playthrough, as well as the player now only being able to carry two weapons at a time, although the player is free to choose which two weapons they want to carry. Cork can also dual wield any single-handed weapons as it is no longer limited to just revolvers, as it was in the previous game. The sequel features mostly the same enemy design from the previous game, however they now look a little different than before, as overall design is slightly better here, but not much different with most enemy types being recycled here, but now they are taking the streets of Baltimore. The creatures now represent different crimes that are frequent in the city of Baltimore, with Slayer as now representing like knife crime and creatures like mainliners representing drug use. But overall, it's just recycled ideas and creatures from the previous game, with a few creatures added, but it is overall a pretty lazy move by developers, as some creature designs were redone to look a little bit better overall, but don't really bring much of anything new to the table. 
Just like the previous game, Torque has an insanity meter that will fill as Torque kills enemies, and once filled will flash on screen, prompting Torque's transformation into his inner monster. But Ties That Bind features a new charged attack while in this form, while also differing based on Torque's morality level. In the previous game, the insanity mode would cause Torque's health to drain automatically and would kill him if he didn't change back to human form quick enough. But here in Ties That Bind, that is no longer the case, as Torque will no longer die, but he will become dizzy and will not be able to move or fight for a moment instead of having an instant death. Just like the original game, Ties That Bind features a morality system. And at numerous moments throughout the game, Torque will be faced with several situations where a choice will have to be made by the player that affects the overall game. And when Torque encounters these NPCs, he will almost always hear his wife's voice urging him to help others, while also hearing the voice of Blackmore telling him to kill them. A situation where it's like having a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other, as you the player decide who to kill or who to save in these moments. Ties That Bind released the mostly favorable reviews, but was generally criticized for being way too similar to the previous game, as most felt the game would only appeal to fans of the original game, as it lacks innovation in its overall gameplay and ideas and at times seemed like this game was rushed out just to cash in on the success of the previous game. He's just in your way. While the game did have minor upgrades from the original, it also featured a lot of recycled ideas and designs instead of actually being something different. Don't get me wrong, I actually enjoyed the sequel just as much as I did the original, maybe even more, as it is more polished graphically when compared to the first game, but just feels like this game could have really taken that next step for the franchise had it not been rushed out so quickly, as it suffers from not being much different at all from the original game. But that's not the worst thing I suppose, as the sequel still manages to be fun and even more action packed than the previous game, as the sequel focuses more on the action packed gameplay than the overall horror as monster design is mostly similar to the last game not really bringing much of anything new in the way of horror here that the first game didn't already introduce. The sequel focuses more on its gameplay and overall story between Torque and Blackmore than anything else. Blackmore is the game's antagonist, voiced by Michael Clark Duncan, and the story focuses more on Torque's past as Blackmore is inexplicably tied to every major event in Torque's life, including his imprisonment and the death of Torque's family members. And throughout the game, it is finally revealed that Blackmore is Torque's alter ego, who takes control over Torque every time he blacks out. Blackmore's goal throughout the story is to persuade Torque into doing evil things as he tries to bring Torque onto his side, so to speak. But the story plays out depending on the morality system, just like the previous game, with a good, a neutral, or a bad ending based on your actions throughout the playthrough. Overall, this game series is really fun at its core, and both of these games are enjoyable, even when looking back on them today. And even though I have my issues with certain choices made in its development, I would say I really enjoyed Ties That Bind more so than the original, as I felt its gameplay was improved enough to make it more interesting of an experience than before. But there is a sense that the game was rushed quite a bit, as it is just more of the same from the original game. If you haven't experienced this series, I recommend you doing so, but it could prove tricky trying to find copies of this game on the old PS2 or Xbox, but I'm pretty sure it's available on PC. This game series was suggested by a subscriber, and I really enjoyed looking back on these games. And if you did as well, please be sure to hit that like button down below. And also, consider subscribing for more games just like this, as we continue to grow this channel. But, until next time, this has been TV, and I'll catch you in a future video.
Get you to break the rules, and the way I play, it's all or nothing. 